So uh, today I'm going to uh, share some thoughts um, on empowering communities uh, and devolution based on my experience um, of local government in Wiltshire in the UK. In, uh, in some ways, Wiltshire serves uh, as a bit of a laboratory, um, a place where we experimented with new approaches, uh, developed new ideas, um, applied those ideas and we tested and refined them over a period of around 10 years or so. Um, and Wiltshire serves as a bit of a case study, uh, but it also draws out themes uh, that I think are universal. Um, and these apply, uh, ideas can be applied uh, anywhere, uh, not just home here in the UK. So Wiltshire is a rural county uh, in the southwest of England, about 100 miles uh, south uh, west, actually, of London. Um, it's characterised by uh, rural market towns and villages sparsely um, scattered across a large and rich agricultural landscape. Uh, rather incongruously, um, Wiltshire is also home to around about a third of the country's military personnel um, with very large garrison towns uh, ringing the army uh, training areas on Salisbury Plain. So prior to 2009, Wiltshire, like um, most other uh, rural counties in England, uh, at that time anyway, uh, had a three-tier system of local government, a county council, a strategic uh, level authority, four smaller uh, district councils, and then below that, there were around 300 parish and town councils, the most local level of uh, government in, in the UK. Um, and in 2006, uh, Tony Blair's Labour government embarked on a programme of local government reorganisation, um, rationalising the two-tier system by combining uh, district and county councils into single, uh, all-purpose, unitary councils. The Wiltshire Council uh, launched a bid for unitary status uh, in 2007, uh, and that's where I first became in, involved. Uh, the initial submission uh, was rejected by the government um, because it failed to demonstrate how such a large authority could be truly responsive uh, to the needs of its diverse and widely dispersed uh, communities. So by a, a, a stroke of good fortune, really, uh, I was invited in to refine the submission and develop a new approach uh, uh, to democratic governance in Wiltshire. So, uh, and at that time, I was also studying um, at Inlegov, the Institute of Local Government Studies at Birmingham, uh, learning about political and governance theory. So uh, that's a dangerous cocktail. <laughs> um, so and I was very keen to apply um, that learning outside of the academic sphere. Uh, but I wasn't a very good student, actually. Um, I remember once sitting in a lecture um, in, on government policy making and thinking how totally detached um, those academic studies were from the reality of my own experience. You know, from my viewpoint, uh, relying on uh, from my viewpoint, policy making is often a really murky, uh, messy process. Um, it's often driven by politics and enabled by very ambitious individuals um, relying on convenient data uh, where that if that's actually available um, and completely detached from those that uh, the policies are intended to benefit. So I think my lecturer has got a little bit fed up of my constant challenges. Uh, but then on the other hand, uh, Wiltshire Council was so driven to achieve that glittering prize of unitary status that they rather surprisingly gave me pretty much free reign. So let's just backtrack slightly. Um, in rejecting the initial unitary bid, the government sought assurances that the new Wiltshire Council uh, would not be remote and unaccountable. Uh, it wanted to know how local people could be empowered and plugged in to local democracy. And in response, the council embarked on a fairly radical plan of devolution based on the principle of subsidiarity. I mean, that essentially is determining the locus of each of its functions and allowing those people most impacted to decide, or at least to influence, uh, the priorities and outcomes to be pursued. So as an example uh, of this uh, in practice is the way the council changed its approach to traffic regulations. 
um, under the two-tier system, Wiltshire Council considered requests uh, for changes to highway speed limits and waiting restrictions, um, uh, and it considered those against available data uh, and decided whether there was a proven need for the interve intervention and proceeded with the advert advertisement of the traffic regulation order or not. You know, it sounds, even saying it sounds bureaucratic, and it certainly was. Um, but under the new arrangements, uh, recognising that those traffic orders impact only really um, at the local parish council level, the decisions were delegated to the local parish or town council. The parish also picks up some of the costs involved of uh, implementing uh, local schemes. So it, it empowers local people, it improves implementation to better reflect local circumstances, and it levers additional um, resources into service provision. Uh, to facilitate devolution and community empowerment, Wiltshire Council agreed to establish uh, 18 community area boards. The boards are constituted under the Local Government Act 2000, um, which allows councils to set up area committees with both executive and non-executive functions. Um, they bring together, the boards bring together elected members for the area with co-opted local representatives from the community, uh, importantly local parish, council, local parish and town councillors also have a seat along with representatives from partner organisations such as the police, the uh, NHS and, and other business community and others. Um, and actually membership is determined by the uh, local area board itself um, within a framework that's been set by Wiltshire Council. Now, we found that uh, the pilots during pilot, the pilot phase before the full scale launch of the area boards, that um, people were cynical uh, about the attended, intended approach, um, fearing yet and yet another uh, consultative body um, with no real say or influence or decision making powers. And I think uh, we as a team, we were hypersensitive to that um, feeling. Um, and we we just knew that the to be meaningful uh, the uh, area boards needed to hold powers uh, meaningful powers and initially that led to a bit of a standoff with politicians who were keen to retain central control um, and I know this is something that will resonate with many of you uh, here today um, but I think through participation uh, with the pilot area boards, the executive members and the councillors at Wiltshire Council heard these um, views from their electors directly. Uh, no, it wasn't just once, it was over and over again, these boards need to have real influence and power. And a bit by bit, they, they slowly came around. Um, and the area boards that were finally established in Wiltshire um, work because they do have real teeth. Um, they've endured for 14 years um, and continue to draw people in. Um, similar experiments in uh, the UK um, have s failed and some have spectacularly failed um, because they didn't, the, the devolved structures didn't have any real decision making powers or influence um, and they were just perceived to be talking shops and people voted with their feet and just didn't attend those. But Wiltshire's area boards do have powers and these are enshrined in the council's constitution. Um, the community area board um, is the de default body for all council decisions, believe it or not, um, provided those uh, decisions are within budget, uh, provided the decision does not contradict uh, policy uh, set by the council and provided the decision isn't going to have an impact outside of the community area on the neighbouring community, for example. But apart from that, um, anything goes. Uh, the boards can consider any issue regardless uh, where the statutory responsibility lies. Uh, they champion local communities and they challenge both the council and other civic institutions in the area. So uh, I think that really is one of the keys to success of devolved arrangements. And over time, the, the boards have come to be seen by local people as the place where decisions uh, that affect them are made. You know, effectively, it's where the Wiltshire Council makes its local decisions. Um, and they also, the area boards provide the framework um, for community empowerment, engagement, local partnership, working and, and actually service delivery too. Um, so the, board, the boards actually are a hub of a wider 
community networks and uh, these uh, and they have a they also they are able to establish their own local structures to facilitate specific functions such as health um, uh, young people's activities uh, transport um, economy and the environment so they've, they've um, developed their own approaches in those areas uh, and they use their democratic democratic influence um, to bring key stakeholders stakeholders together um, to solve local problems, share resources, uh, align services, and agree local uh, priorities uh, for action. Now, the area boards also um, enhance uh, the role of elected councillors. Um, Wiltshire has 98 elected uh, councillors, of which only 11 serve on uh, the executive cabinet. So that's effectively where the significant decisions are made in Wiltshire. So that means there are 87 backbench members with uh, who maybe hold a few committee places, uh, 10 meetings of the full council every other month, um, but they're otherwise detached from any real influence. Um, so the area boards uh, give all 98 members a pivotal role at the heart of their local uh, local executive decision making. Um, so yeah, that, that gives them a meaningful role. And I know they value that particularly highly. Um, and it also enhances public accountability. I mean, it raises the profile of uh, those members with their elected, uh, with their local electors, and that wasn't necessarily the case before. I mean, since the introduction of the area boards 14 years ago, these backbench members um, have become the strongest advocates um, for devolved governance. Uh, and they've effectively resisted attempts uh, to reduce budgets and curtail powers whenever this has been suggested. Um, so bear in mind that councillors can be uh, a powerful driver for sustained change. 